Hi everybody, this is Bill from HowToVanish.com and I'm going to show you how to have real financial privacy. Governments have really tight control over money. So whenever you use government issued money or the formal financial system, you have very little privacy. Partly because usually you have to disclose a lot of things and you're subject to a lot of re regulation. Now gold and silver are a real alternative to this formal financial systems and government issued money, but they're really not very practical for everyday use to use gold and silver coins. Partly because you really can't go and buy groceries or pay for gas or pay rent uh, or even get a movie ticket or a cup of coffee with gold or silver coins. Just not very many people accept them. Plus in a digital world where a lot of regular transactions are occurring on the internet and you have automatic bill pay and things like that, it, it's really hard to make payments with gold or silver. There's a lot of companies that offer a digital gold backed currency that allow you to trade gold and silver in really small quantities over the internet or in very large quantities if you want. But those are still subject to certain risks. There's political risk because the gold needs to be stored somewhere. And there's risk that a rogue employee will go and divulge information to all kinds of people. Plus, a lot of those digital gold-backed currencies haven't been widely accepted yet. So you still have that problem of not being able to pay for groceries and your cup of coffee and all that kind of stuff. Plus, a lot of those companies have been forced to be regulated anyway. So that completely defeats the purpose of privacy and financial freedom uh, if you're still having to be regulated. Another alternative that's popped up a lot are digital currencies. They've been uh, created to hope to provide the financial privacy and freedom uh, that people are seeking. But they've all suffered from one serious problem, and that is centralization some kind of centralized database or program or system or company has had to keep track of all the users and all the transactions. And whenever you have a centralized system, some kind of centralization, you have a big target for authorities to regulate or to go after with subpoenas um, or just to for hackers to target. And that is no matter where they're located, even if they're located in somewhere that's considered a data haven or information haven. When you think of a company like Napster, Napster was brought down originally because of that centralization. Or even UBS was subject to pressure from outside political forces even though they were in a country that had strong protections of that information. The latest alternative is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a digital currency, but it solved the centralization problem with some really complicated cryptography they've created a system where bitcoins can be created, exchanged, and verified without centralization, completely anonymously, and in a way that's really hard for anyone to trace or track. That decentralization is a complete game changer. We know how the original Napster went down because of centralization, but Pirate Bay is a similar idea, similar concept of sharing information peer-to-peer, -peer, but it has been the most successful way of doing that because it is decentralized. So essentially, over the past several years, they've only suffered a few hiccups in their service, but you've been able to use it and get and share information like that uh, almost uninterrupted for several years. Now, Bitcoin has a similar idea of decentralization, but it's even better and even stronger. So if we did a comparison between Bitcoin and the formal banking sector about their services and features, you can see some pretty striking differences. Bitcoin has instantaneous transactions. You don't have to deal with going to the bank during banking hours or making a transfer on a day that's a work day and not a bank holiday and not a federal holiday. You don't have to worry about transactions across the world and, and different time zones and wondering is, is there a holiday in that country, is it a holiday in this country, um, and things like that. You don't need verifications, you don't need uh, really extensive application processes. There's no fees to transfer it, so every transfer is completely free. Plus, there's much higher security with Bitcoin than there is with the formal banking sector. Uh, when you log into your bank online, uh, you have lower encryption and lower protection than you do when you log into Bitcoin and make a transfer.
Bitcoin is, of course, completely private and can be completely anonymous if you want to. Plus, with Bitcoin, there's no bureaucrat devaluing the money that's just sitting in your account. You know, on those kind of merits, Bitcoin would be very, very valuable as a paid service. But the good thing is, it's absolutely free. But there are still some risks to using Bitcoin. It's very new, so nobody knows if there's going to be some bug that's encountered or uh, if it will even uh, be able to survive legality. Some governments might make it illegal to use Bitcoin, um, although that would be extremely difficult to enforce. But I think it's only a matter of time before Bitcoin or some other competitor becomes a real viable alternative. Of course, you still have the problem of will Bitcoin become widely used and widely accepted enough to pay for your everyday stuff, to pay for your groceries, to pay rent, to pay for gas. But I think that that's a small hurdle because uh, smartphone app developers and uh, the ability and the inexpensiveness of having um, handheld and, and computing power in your hands, uh, you'll be able to easily transfer bitcoins through your smartphone or th even through text messages. So I think that's a really small hurdle. This is Bill from HowToVanish.com.